Example three in 3.4 takes a bit of a different direction here. And it's going to talk about how we can graph polynomials using transformations instead of using multiplicity and that. And that'll be part of this as well. Um, the way that you can eyeball them is if you think back about the previous examples, we had three unique factors and each of those factors had X being it added or subtracted by a different number. That means that we can't you know, call that H because it's a different value throughout the equation. And that's how you can tell it's this type of question because you're gonna see that X only shows up in one position and it is subtracted by H multiplied by B, the entire function is multiplied by A. And finally we add K on the outside. I really wanna stress that this is the same as we've been doing throughout the course. Nothing has changed since one point or you know, chapter one or even chapter two when we did it with radicals. We are just doing that with you know now polynomials. What's really important is whatever degree is on that B times X minus H, that's the base function that we're gonna look at. So if we had Y equals A time, or let's just say Y equals two, times x minus five to the power of six, we would look at y equals x to the six as our base function. And that's why we can do this with polynomials because we have that knowledge of what our basic function looks like. Typically they tell you what the basic function should be, but they don't have to. So it tells us that y equals x cubed is transformed to get y equals negative two times in a bracket, four times x minus one cubed, and then finally plus three. So now it wants us to state the parameters. And I would just like to identify that this function right here is negative two times a function evaluated at four times x minus one plus three if f of x is equal to x cubed. And I really, maybe I'll put a Y in front of there. I want to reemphasize that this is chapter one all over again. So what I can do is I can identify the parameters A, B, H, and K. For this question, A is negative two, B is positive four, H is positive one, and K is positive three. If A is negative two, we need to reflect over, we're in a room here, but that's okay, the X axis. And we also need to vertical stretch by two. If B is four, we need to horizontally stretch by one quarter. If H is one, we're gonna horizontally translate one to the right. And if K is equal to three, we're gonna vertically translate three up. Now I am a big fan of the mapping. So if we think about this, if we look at Y equals X cubed, which has coordinates X comma Y, they are going to turn into, and that's gonna be on the graph of Y equals negative two times four times X minus one all cubed plus three what's going to happen is we can use our a b h and k parameters and say that this would turn into one fourth x we're going one to the right so i would add one comma negative two y we're going three up so i would add three now that would allow me to take any point on y equals x cubed and find its, its corresponding transformed point on our new function and i'm not going to try to say that again this is quite wordy I don't like what they do in the table. We're gonna do it because I think it's important to see what they do is they apply the transformations one after another. Really importantly that you have to do stretches and reflections before you do translations. They actually do all the translations together here. So I'd like to identify what's happening. If we look from the first column to the second column, all we're doing is taking a point X comma Y and we're multiplying the X by one fourth. So negative two comma negative eight is gonna turn into negative two over four comma negative eight. Negative one comma negative one is gonna become negative one fourth comma negative one. Zero comma zero will still be at zero comma zero. Remember that stretches don't affect the origin. One comma one will turn into one fourth comma one. And then finally two comma eight will turn into two fourths comma eight. Definitely okay to write those two fourths as you know, uh, 0 0.5 um, or you know, one half. They do certainly reduce into there. All right, if we look from the second column to the third column, what we are doing, and it's kind of tough to see here, but we are replacing X comma Y with X comma negative two Y. So I'm just multiplying the black column here, uh, the Y values by negative two. So I'm gonna rewrite these and I'm gonna use fractions anywhere I can. So this is gonna be negative 0 0.5, negative eight times negative two is positive 16. We're gonna have negative 0 0.25, negative one times negative two is positive two. And we're gonna have zero, zero actually stay at zero, zero. That origin is really unique in how you have to translate to change it. One fourth comma one is gonna turn into 0 0.25 comma negative two and two fourths comma eight will turn into 0 0.5 comma negative 16. The last step, and I'll do it in blue, is to go from the third to the fourth column. The points in the third column, we are going to add one to the X's and we are going to add three to the Y's. 
really important that we are doing the mapping on the bottom. We've just done it in three steps. I'm not really sure why they separate the vertical and the horizontal stretch. We could have done them together. In all honesty, I would rather see you use the mapping to go from the first point to the final point. Right? That, that saves us a little bit of space and time compared to this table. But I think the table does show the systematic process that we can go through, and that has value as well. Okay, so if I add 1 to x, that's going to take me to positive 0 0.5. If I add 3 to y, that's going to take me to 19. Adding 1 to negative 0 0.25 takes me to 0 0.75. Adding 3 to 2 takes me to 5. This turns into 1, 3. That's a really great way to see the translation happening. 0.25 plus 1 is 1.25. Negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1. 0 0.5 plus 1 is 1 1.5. And negative 16 plus 3 is negative 13. Now, these points that I've you know, put a blue square around are going to be the points on the final version of our cubic in this case. So they ask us to sketch that, just moving through. There's my original, y equals x cubed, and here is my transform point. And you can see they've shown those points on the graph so we can see exactly what's happened. And I really do think a question like this would likely just be some kind of a calculator question, but it is important that we are redoing or re-examining function transformations just like we studied in chapter one.